Well, good morning, River Church, and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for responding to the invitation from the Father Heart of God. Now, the Apostle Paul has a couple of things to say about this this Father Heart of God in the book of of Galatians. He says in chapter 4, verse 4 through 7, When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son and a daughter. And if a son and a daughter, then an heir through God. So church, we invite you into worship this morning. Not as, a, not as a slave to sin, but as an heir to the kingdom of God, as a son and as a daughter. Would you join us in worship this morning? For unto us a child is born and for unto us the sun is given, and he shall be called the Prince of Peace and the Mighty God. For unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And he shall be called the Everlasting Father. For unto us a child is born, and he shall reign on David's throne. For unto us a son is given, and he shall be called.
still true wise men still draw near to worship you oh still draw near to worship you I 
dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, he is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. We come to the time in our service where we just pause for a few announcements and also just to make note of the offering. So, so the only announcement I really have for you is uh, to truly ask you to reach out to your fellow Riverites, your fellow friends, wherever they are, whether they're located next door or down the street or in another city or province, uh, would you just reach out to them and uh, touch base with them? Uh, Christmas has always been about connecting with people, but more so in this lockdown of which we're experiencing, it's all the more important for each and every one of us to reach out and just touch uh, somebody. So do so. Uh, stay safe in doing so, but uh, uh, may I encourage you to, uh, to stay connected. 
and, and therefore grounded, grounded here in reality here, but also knowing that, that Christ uh, reigns over all, that he is um, the Lord over every square inch of this world. And so uh, do so in that full knowledge. As for the offering, um, here it is, the last Sunday of uh, the year 2020. And uh, if, if you are inclined um, in reviewing all of your finances and saying, hey, I think there's a little extra that we can pass along to the church as part of your tithe, uh, we would certainly appreciate that. Uh, if the Lord is nudging you in that direction, thank you so much. We, we look forward to it. But we are taking up an offering at this time. Um, it's for tithes and offerings. Our tithes are for the ongoing ministries of our church and all the multifacets of uh, ministry that we do. And our offerings, in essence, go towards uh, social justice causes that we do, of which we've been doing quite a bit. You must agree. So um, that is the call before you. One, connect with people. Two, um, check, uh, check out how you might be giving and you can do so through rivercommunity.ca and there in the top right corner you'll find the button for give. It'll take you to another website and uh, you can give uh, through that online uh, platform. So thanks very much and see you soon. Hello and welcome to post-Christmas time of the year, that time between Christmas and New Year. How was your Christmas, COVID and all? Were you able to meet with family? Were you secluded, isolated? Were you anxious, defeated? I hope you were able to make the best of it. I hope that you were able to celebrate Isaiah 9 verses 2 to 7. We spoke about the gifts of hope, joy, love, and peace. I hope that you are able to celebrate the birth of a son, the birth of Christ. Isaiah's prophecy, as foretold, prepared us to anticipate Christ. But did you notice that there were two verses that we did not touch? Undoubtedly, as I read them each week, you, <laughs> including I, glazed over them. Do you know the two verses I'm talking about? Yes? <laughs> no? Well, I would like to deal with those two verses today. But first, I ask you to turn with me to the story of Gideon, as found in the book of Judges, chapters 6 and 7. So, before we do that, let's just pause for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, here we are yet again. Uh, we are in between. We are in between two large events, per se, in our lives. and We are in between a, a large event in, in, in our total lives, in our local lives, in our global lives. And Lord, we seek your face. So speak to us here in this lull in which we are, find ourselves. Speak to us through your word. Encourage us, we pray, through your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our newborn Savior. Amen. So, having turned to uh, the 6th and 7th chapter in Judges, let me tell you that Gideon is the 5th judge appointed to lead Israel after Joshua led the Israelites out of the Promised Land. The Israelites had had peace for about 40 years after Deborah saved the Israelites from the Canaanites. You can check into that story as well, where Jael and Sisera were key figures in that story as well. But in the absence of Deborah, the Midianites grew in their oppression of the Israelites. They ravaged the land. They raided the harvest, leaving the Israelites with little or no food. It is harvest time that we find Gideon threshing his wheat. Judges 6 verse 11. Now, typically, wheat is threshed on the top of a hill where you throw it up and the, the wind separates the chaff from the wheat because the chaff is light and the wheat is heavier and it, the wheat falls to the ground and the chaff is blown away. But not this day. <laughs> not Gideon. There is no way he wanted to advertise to the enemy that he had wheat <laughs> for them to steal. He wasn't going to throw it up in the air for them to see what he was doing. So he goes into his wine press, and there he threshes his wheat. Here's a picture of the Middle Eastern wine press, and you can see um, how they would stomp up 
uh, on the grapes of, of this wine press and it would flow into the deep vat. So we find Gideon in that vat, not at the top, but at the bottom and in that vat in the ground. Gideon is hiding. And the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon saying to him, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Interesting words, at least Gideon thought so. For he disputed that God was with them and that he was not a mighty warrior. In fact, he told the angel that he was the least in his family and that his family was the weakest of their tribe. That's verse 15. But through a series of tests, Gideon comes to believe that the Lord is calling him to lead the Israelites out from the oppression of the Midianites. Truth be told, Gideon is still a little bit squeamish. And so after a few tests, he becomes further convinced. Now, forgive me, I'm just covering the mountaintops of this story. I'm not reading every verse by verse by verse. I'm hoping and praying that you will read all of these chapters in their totality and, and you'll get a, a, a bigger picture. But I'm just wanting to capture the, the peaks of this story so that the story is then presented to you. So Gideon, convinced that he is a mighty warrior, calls out to the 12 tribes of Israel to send them their soldiers. 32,000 of them show up. But the Lord says to Gideon, Judges 7 verse 2, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. <laughs> too many men? What's with that? I mean, I thought we need big armies in order to defeat enemies, but... Well, so Gideon tells the army, tells all the people, that whoever is trembling with fear at the, at, at the thought, at the prospect of going into battle, whoever is trembling in fear, you may go home. 22,000 men turn tail and go home. And God says to Gideon, chapter 7, verse 4, there are still too many men. <laughs> You see, God did not want Israel to boast that Israel's army had saved her. God wanted to make sure that Israel knew that it was the Lord who accomplished the salvation. So through a process of watching the army drink water from a creek, the Lord and Gideon whittled the army down to 300 men. <laughs> 300. I'm not sure if you were chosen to stay, but let's say that you were. Uh, now that you know there's only 300 soldiers, do you think now that you might be trembling with fear? <laughs> I think I would be. So here's what they did with the Lord's help and instructions. They went to surround the enemy's camp with a clay pot shielding the light of a torch in one hand and a trumpet in the other. At Gideon's command, they broke the clay pots, blew on the trumpet, and shouted, For the Lord and for Gideon. At that, the camp woke up in terror, and the Lord caused them all to turn on one another, and 120,000 enemies died that day. 120,000. The victory belongs to the Lord. Okay. With this story in front of us, let us look at the Isaiah prophecy again. This time, let us keep in mind what the Lord did for Gideon and for the Israelites. Isaiah 9. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. <laughs> Remember the Israelites oppressed by the Midianites. Remember Gideon hiding in the wine press, afraid, anxious, fearful of death. Verse 3. You, Lord, have enlarged their nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. <laughs> Again, remember Gideon threshing his wheat, thankful for the harvest, I'm sure, but afraid. As men rejoice when dividing plunder. <laughs> ah, here comes the allusion to the Midian battle. Verse 4. 
For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. You will notice that four times the word joy appears in verse 3. And then verse 4 explains why the joy. Do you see it? The Lord accomplished the victory in the day of Midian's defeat. This seemingly impossible victory was won by the Lord. And you can imagine the rejoicing that the Israelites did. So I think it's easy for us to gloss over these texts which have war and battle in them. (laughs) I know I have thinking that they are rather primitive and brutal, irrelevant to the Christmas story as we read this prophecy. But brutal as they may be, this verse holds a treasure buried in their unlikely phrases. Verse 4 reminds us that it is the Lord who has done this in the past. It will be the Lord who accomplished this again. Isaiah reminds us, verse 7, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. This past year has been quite the year, has it not? For many of us, we have felt the oppression of our situation. Your first thoughts vary depending on how close to the coronavirus touched you or your loved ones. If you lost a loved one to the virus, then you know the sorrow the Israelites felt when the Midianites took a life of a loved one in any skirmish they had. If you lost a job or income because of the economic slowdown on account of COVID, then you know how the Israelites felt at the hand of their oppressors who stole their harvest. If you find yourself anxious and hiding in your house on account of COVID, then you know how Gideon felt hiding in that wine press. If you have found yourself asking God, Why has this happened to us? Are you not with us? Then you know how Gideon was feeling when the angel of the Lord greeted him. (laughs) Has the Lord abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midianites? Has the Lord abandoned us and put us into the hand of the COVID pandemic? This past year has been quite the year. And if you are thinking these thoughts and and feeling these feelings, then I don't blame you. During this COVID pandemic, it has been hard to see the hand of God at work. Remember how the angel greeted Gideon? The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. I feel like that is what God is now saying to us. The Lord is with us. We are mighty warriors. I feel like God is calling us to rise, to be strong, to be courageous, especially as we walk into the new year. The Lord has been with us. As we have navigated our way through the pandemic, the Lord has maintained our river community. Some may have left. Others have joined. There there was a bit of a wake after Pastor Bruce's departure. But the Lord caused the executive and the staff to stand tall and to face the challenge. We closed our doors for five months and then we opened them again. And two months later, we closed our doors again. But not after acquiring a worship director to lead us and to guide us in how we worship the Lord during this time. Christmas with style came off better than dreamed for or expected. More people are engaging in our online services than perhaps you know. Facebook Live has some 30 homes tapped in to watch at 1030. But by day's end, that number rises to 280 viewers tapping in to catch our worship service. And then another 50 or so take in our services on YouTube. The Lord is with us and he is calling us mighty. The zeal of the Lord accomplished this. And so 
our thoughts turn to next year. Who would have thought that within one year's time that we would have a vaccine for a virus? I mean, wow. That is the light that we see at the end of our tunnel. That is the light that dawns on us in the shadow of death's valley. That was our Isaiah Christmas prophecy. And when Jesus arrived, this is what John had to say about the Christ. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. And to all who receive him, to all those who believe in his name, he gave the right to be called children of God. Because we believe that the Lord is with us through his son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, we have the right to be called children of God. Therefore, we enter 2021 with that confidence as mighty warriors. Are you with me? Are you standing tall with God? Verse 3 of our Christmas prophecy says that the Lord desires to increase our joy. The Lord desires to enlarge our nation, as He did for the Israelites against the Midianites, as He did by sending His Son to defeat our enemy, so He does again in our lives in 2021. The Lord wishes to shatter the yoke that burdens you. The Lord wishes to break the hold of your oppressor. And as he does, he invites you to rejoice. Now, before you do, before you rejoice completely, may I, on behalf of God, ask you to, to do one thing? Verse 5 in Isaiah's prophecy says this, Every warrior's boot used in the battle and every garment rolled in blood will be cleansed for burning, will be fuel for the fire. This is the second verse that we so often glaze over as we read the Christmas prophecy. But here we are, knowing that the Lord is the victor. He has given us salvation and we are about to return to normal or at least new rhythms. But before you do, would you burn your boots and your garments used in the battle of 2020? You see, there was another battle fought against the Midianites. In Numbers 31, we read about the last battle that Moses led the Israelites in. It was the last battle that he led them before Moses was going to return to the Lord. As Moses would rise up onto that mountain, never to be seen again. This was the last battle that he led the Israelites in. And in this battle, the Israelites, the Lord, is victorious also. But before the soldiers could return to their homes, they had to purify themselves. They had to wait seven days before returning home. And in those seven days, they had to burn everything made of leather, goat, hair, or wood. Even all the metals had to be purified by fire. And once that was done, anything not destroyed by fire needed to be cleansed by water. So verse 5 in Isaiah 9 reminds us that we need it to be cleansed, that we need it to be purified before returning to our homes of normalcy. So here's my request. Knowing that the Lord has done this for you, may we, in these last days before 2021, may we take the time to purify ourselves. I invite you to take stock of anything that you used in the battle of 2020 and purify it. I invite you to cleanse yourself of any thoughts hidden or visible, that you had and place it before the Lord. I invite you to review any actions you did in the past year and present them to the Lord for Him to purify you from. I invite you 
to reflect on any relationship that you encountered in the past year that were conflicted by the COVID situation and seek to cleanse them. I invite you to release any harbored ill feelings either towards yourself, towards your friends or family, towards strangers, towards God himself. To release these grudges and resentments and allow God to purify you from them. Now, I do not ask this so that you can accomplish this on your own. Rather, I ask that you come to the Lord with a contrite heart, full of repentance and conviction that the Lord is the Lord, and He alone is the victor, and it is He who will save you. Will you set aside some time before 2021 to purify yourself? To close, I'm reminded of 2 Corinthians 4, verses 6 and 7, which says this to us. Verse 6, For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness. He has made His light shine in our hearts, which is Jesus that is what God wants to accomplish in us. That His light shines in our darkness, yes. That His light shines out for others to see, more so. Yes, Jesus, who came into this fallen world, weak and vulnerable as a baby, He brought God's light and salvation to all who call upon His name. And then verse 7 says, We have this treasure in jars of clay, to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. The incarnation, the son that was given, is like the victory at Midian. Jesus came in a jar of clay, human form, that first Christmas morn. And then it was shattered on that fateful Easter afternoon. And his all-surpassing power and light was revealed for all to see. God is telling us that we cannot do it ourselves. He delights to save us in our weakness as we trust and lean into him for salvation. So rejoice in the miracle of Jesus. The true light coming into the world to save us. And let us also remember the glorious day of Midian when, when God wanted to clearly make it known to Israel that they could not save themselves. Let us also remember the Christmas prophecy by Isaiah and how God wants to clearly make it known to us that we cannot save ourselves. And yet, we are confident going forward because we have a Savior. Unto us a child is born, a son is given. Praise God for sending Jesus our salvation. Amen. Shall we pray? Here we are yet again, Lord, having heard your word, having heard more of the stories and how you have been with us in the past how you have provided again and again and again throughout the stories that we read, and then for the ultimate to be in, in your Son, Jesus Christ, who accomplished all that you desired for us. So, Lord, may we indeed lean into you. May we lean into your Son, Jesus Christ, and, and the salvation that he brings, the light that he is to our darkness, the light that he is to the darkness in our world. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the salvation that you offer to us. We thank you that we can now walk into a new year knowing that you are with us, that we can walk tall and straight because you go before us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being that God. Thank you for being our God. In your name, maker, Savior, Redeemer, Sustainer of heaven and earth. In your name. Amen. Here we are at the end of our service. 
here the last service of uh, December 2020. <laughs> what a year it's been. But here we are before we enter into the, the new year, uh, 2021. And the Lord wishes to uh, speak a few words to you before you go. We call it a blessing God's blessing, God's parting blessing. I'd like to pull it from Isaiah 9, which we have been traveling through here during all of Advent and into Christmas and, and even this post-Christmas day. So whether you're standing or not, I invite you to stand, but hear these words from the Lord. The Lord enlarges your nation. The Lord increases your joy. And so may you rejoice before the Lord as people before the harvest, as people dividing the plunder. Because unto us a son has been born, a child has been given, and he is Christ the Lord. May you go in his peace, of which there is no end. Amen. See you next year.
You were the word at the beginning One with God, the Lord most high Your hidden glory in creation Now revealed in you our Christ What a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Christ my King What a beautiful name it is Nothing compares to this What a beautiful name it is The name of Jesus Didn't want heaven without us So Jesus, you brought heaven down My sin was great, your love was greater What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold. Tore before you, you silenced the boast I've seen. 